Hello, singers. If you want to think about the mechanics of singing in their most pared down basic way, you can imagine that you've got a tank where the air is stored and then a tube that you're going to move the air through to send the sound out into the world. So if we're thinking about this tank and this tube, today we're going to do an exercise that will focus on removing the restrictions or obstructions in that tube so that we can get a more free sound. So we are going to try to remove the principal restriction, which is crooked posture, posture that is unaligned, which you can sort of imagine if there's a tube coming up out of your tank. Um, if you're kind of standing in a crookedy posture, your pipe or your tube might have all kinds of kinks in it. So we're going to work on removing those kinks. And then furthermore, once the air gets up to the top of the pipe, a very common, perhaps the principal obstruction is the tongue, which loves to sort of ball up in the back of the mouth and uh, limit the freedom of the sound. So today's exercise is going to hopefully pinpoint a few areas of either tension or misalignment and help you to straighten those out, release them, and give you a nice free, lovely start to your practice. So let's begin, <coughs> excuse me, let's begin by really straightening our tube. And I'm going to do that today using this wall. I've moved you a little closer today so that I can actually back up and put my head back against the wall. Now that is comfortable for me. If it's not comfortable for you to do so, um, it is possible, of course, to do this exercise just standing normally and just aligning the posture using the novel lift exercise. But you will have to be hyper vigilant about what happens as you move through the singing exercise to be sure that you're not, as you go through the exercise, sort of replacing your aligned posture with something either stuck forward, craning upward, or some other type of misalignment in the tube. Now for me, I prefer not to think about it, so I'm just gonna use the wall and I'll be able to feel with the back of my head if my head comes away, or if my head is sort of sliding this way to allow my chin to crane forward and up. Now, let's remove the obstruction of the tongue. Let's just start by stretching the tongue, so straight forward, toward one ear, toward the other ear, up toward the nose, and then out, and you can even yawn while you do this. Now it's totally possible that some of you may have already felt that as you stuck the tongue forward, the head drifted away from the wall, and that's a good place to begin your process of just awareness, observing what is happening in the posture and keeping it aligned. Okay, let's get into the real exercise. So our tongue is now a little bit stretched, you can probably feel that the part of the tongue that's stretched the most is that back part, ah, right back there. And that's where we're gonna really wanna try and feel loose and soft. So let's begin by putting the tongue on the lower lip, like this. Yeah, it's not the best look. And the sound, of course, is going to be quite sort of um, woofy. That's totally fine. That's exactly what we're going for today. We're not going to make a sound that you're then going to take and publish into performance. This is going to be a sound that is just purely the byproduct of this good alignment. And then you will take the alignment itself into your future singing. So before we even start singing a note pattern, I want you to begin by putting that tongue on the lower lip and we're going to just send a gust of air nice and strongly through and this is gonna feel somewhat like a mix of like a sigh and the Heimlich maneuver. It's like a strong upward thrust in the belly, like that, like a Santa Claus kind of movement in the belly. And with the tongue on the lower lip, you should get a sound like this. Do you hear all that overtone ringing from my piano? It's because it's such a resonant sound that just flowed upward and out. Let's try that together. Ready? Sip your air in and down. Nice soft belly. And go. <sighs> All right, so now we know what feeling we're going for. Place the back of the head against the wall. It should feel comfortable, not kind of strained or uncomfortable. 
We're going to sip our air down and we're going to sing in our pegiated octave. So like this on the words, on the syllables, e -a -e -a, but with the tongue on the lower lip. I'll demonstrate. Let's start here. Let's try that together. Now here are a number of things that might be happening for you. There's a lot that can go on in this exercise. You might notice that as soon as you go to sing ah, the tongue yanks back into the mouth and you're going to have to really encourage it to just stay floppy, stay out, stay on the lip. Something else that might happen is that as you are working your way up toward the top, you may feel the head drifting away from the wall. Don't jam it back, just try and maintain that contact. contact. Or a common one for me, I may feel that my head, the back of my head is actually sliding down the wall as my chin moves up. So in my case, if you have the same problem as me, it sometimes helps me to feel almost like the back of my head is creeping up the wall as I ascend that arpeggiated scale. Then I can actually just resist that temptation to crane the chin this way. Let's try a couple of these. Will it go up by half steps? See what you feel, but above everything else, look for free movement of the breath and a, a really soft, squishy, kind of broad feeling in the tongue, uh, right there. Let's go. Let's start here. Breathe and go. And here. And here. And here. Now, of course, you can go up as high as you want. You can adjust this to the keys that are comfortable for you. Something that I would love for you to work toward as this exercise becomes a part of your regular routine is to limit somewhat the amount of work that you're doing in the jaw. A lot of us have a tendency to make these vowels e -a, e -a, e -a, and there's really a lot of overwork there and a lot of sort of intrinsic tension that's holding the jaw at every moment. We want to get to a place where the jaw can just sort of hang in a neutral, comfortable place, like if you were totally zoned out. Ah. So let's work toward that being the default position of the jaw. And most of this vowel work, even though the tip of the tongue is out, the tongue itself is very soft and not in an engaged position, you can still make that difference, that angle difference between and it's mostly a case of angle and the contact with the top teeth. So you can do a lot of that with just the tongue and let the jaw sort of be out of the equation. I will attach in the links below both the novel lift video and also the vowels video just to give you a clear walkthrough of how the vowels mechanically operate in the mouth. But for now, let's just do a few more of these. I don't know what key we've been in, but let's just work our way through a few more um, just to get the mechanics of the exercise really familiar. So I'm going to start a little lower this time for my, uh, my alto pals. Let's start here. Ready? Tongues out, breath down. And here. And here. Last one. that you joined me today and I hope this exercise was helpful for you. If you would like more of this clear and I hope fun voice education, I do hope you'll come over to theweeklywarmup.com and see all I have to offer over there. There are weekly videos just like this one of full routines, exercises, and other technical tidbits and there's even a place where you can sign up for an absolutely free uh, guide to building your home practice routine and that will take you all the way from total beginner all the way to practicing pro. So I hope you'll join me over there and thank you for your practicing.